morning, and welcome to the Umpqua Unitarian Universalist Congregation. I'm Laleen Fifield, and your service leader for today. During this season of new growth and joy of being outdoors, we as a community continue to face some ever-changing complexities and some important decisions. I looked around and I thought, the garden's so beautiful. It's so wonderful to be outside. Should we gather at family reunions? Still some not vac vaccinated and there are variants. Restaurants are opening. Do we go out to dine? And three days ago, there were 16 new cases of the virus and the numbers each day bounce up and down. Are you you? When can we return to meeting together at service? I, I miss it so much. I miss you. I'm looking out and I want you there. So yes, we've all shared these feelings and the board and the Sunday Services Committee have talked and considered continually that question. When can we open up? Most important, of course, is how we, how we take care of each other. And that brings me to our most important announcement for today. Now, I want you to mark this date. So if you need to get a pencil, pick up that pencil. May 23rd, easy to remember, it's next Sunday at 1230, we have our congregational meeting on Zoom. The congregational meeting will follow the sermon and the sermon response. So remember, we have the sermon, then there's a discussion after the sermon, and then there will be the congregational meeting at 1230. There's news to hear. There are decisions to be made. It's an important meeting where we're going to vote on the budget and new UU board members. So please try to attend and try to help others attend. In order to not be so isolated, let's spend time this week reaching out to others. And when you do reach out, and make those calls, tell them about the meeting next week at 12.30 on Zoom. And you know, of course, to join in on a, with us on the discussions, all you have to do is just click on the link in your email that Michael Wheeler sends out. Every Saturday, he sends an email, and the email has your link for the service, and your link for the discussion, and your link this week for the congregational meeting. Our sermon today and our ministers today are Reverend Bonnie Anderson and Reverend Andy Anderson. The topic, stepping into the unknown, could that be more timely? It makes me remember something Bonnie said, when we become willing to take a leap into the unknown, into the field of all possibilities, we broaden our focus and that's what we're doing right now. And we're broadening our ideas of what life can be. And she's gonna help us look at all of that. So again, last reminder, services are recorded. You can view them on YouTube. And now comes the service. As you know, we always begin with lighting our chalice. Chalice lighting words for today are about thresholds. We kindle this flame, honoring the doorways in our souls, 
the windows through which we gaze at one another, the balconies where we catch glimpses of the sky, the thresholds we stand on this morning, wondering, hoping, fearing, and dreaming. It is with this energy we move forward. Our opening words for this morning are about a new year for beloved community. It feels like the beginning of a new year with spring being here. And so I've selected these words by Deborah Hoffner. We gather together anticipating the start of this new year with our hopes and dreams and prayers for the year before us and with our minds and hearts and spirits ready to be touched by the year before us, and with our hands and time and talents ready to, ready to be offered in the year before us. We gather together at the start of this new period with gratitude and love for those who stand here with us, for those who have come before us, and may it be a good year, may it be a sweet year, and may we worship together. Now with truly great pleasure, I get to introduce Reverend Andy Anderson and Reverend Bonnie Anderson. The two together are from Roseburg and they travel around the West Coast sharing their music and their message. Andy's been described, and you're going to hear his music real soon, as a singer, a songwriter, and a poet who always comes from the heart. And he composes and performs visionary spiritual music that inspires and uplifts. His music has been referred to as spiritual food for the soul. And Reverend Bonnie, well, she's a teacher whose mission is to allow God to work through her to bring more peace to the world. Using her personal stories and examples, she just drops in ideas that go right to the heart, right to the core. Her speaking style is upbeat and energetic, and I know you're going to enjoy both. We begin with... Reverend Andy Anderson, and a real special song you'll love. Andy?
So now we'd like to move into a short meditation. So if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes and take a deep breath. Take a deep breath through your nose and slowly release it through your mouth. One more deep breath through your nose. Hold it for a second and release. And imagine for a moment that you're walking down a beautiful path in nature. A path in the woods. And you smell the wonderful smell of the trees and the fresh earth and the leaves. You reach out and Touch it, the rough bark of a tree as you walk past it. You hear a stream somewhere far in the distance. It is so peaceful here, so beautiful here. And it's a path that you've walked many times. And as your gaze turns to the right, you see another path that you hadn't noticed before, a side path. So you turn and, and walk down this path, and it comes to a place where the trees are close together and you can't see beyond them, but there is a little place for you to squeeze through. So you walk on this new path and you squeeze through and you find yourself someplace you've never been before. And so you stand in awe at all that you see. And just take a moment in the silence to look around and see what has been revealed to you. And as you've taken in this, this new secret place that you found, you feel an overwhelming sense of gratitude for the beauty and the unexpected pleasure of finding a new spot of beauty. So breathing this in, you turn around and walk back to your own path that you know very well, that probably has your footsteps on it, footprints on it. And as you continue on your walk, you think back with delight of the, the unknown path you found today. So take another deep breath and let it go. As you gently open your eyes and return to the present moment. Good morning, everyone. What a, what a beautiful Sunday morning. And 
Uh, as you know, I'm Reverend Bonnie Anderson and delighted to share a talk with you this morning. So the topic that I chose was stepping into the unknown. And I want to share with you a quote from Deepak Chopra that I love about this. Relinquish your attachment to the known. Step into the unknown and you will step into the field of all possibilities. I want to step into that field of all possibilities. It's, it sounds like a wonderful place. And this is the place that creativity lives in the field of all possibilities. It's the place where solutions exist. If there are things that you haven't been able to figure out or problems you haven't been able to solve, you step into this field and everything is made clear. It's the place where all of our dreams come true, where we live full out, where we wake up, awaken, and live full out. Now, the only thing you need to do to get to let go, it, the only thing we need to do to get into this field is to let go of our attachments to the known. And this is not easy to do, is it? Now, quantum physics tells us that there are an infinite number of potential possibilities available to each one of us at every moment. Just kind of all stacked up there. And we can step, if we don't like the one we're in, we can pick, choose another one and step into it easily. So when we do this, when we step into a new reality, we raise our vibration because the place, this field of infinite possibilities is a place of high vibration, high vibration. The price, however, is surrender getting out of the comfort zone, which is not always our favorite thing to do. I don't know if you've ever seen those little angel cards. They're little rectangular um, pieces of paper that have a, a word on them, and you can draw one and sort of see what it's telling you for that day. Well, one day I drew the one that said surrender. And since that day, months ago, I'm finding this little piece of paper everywhere. I, it magically appears on my kitchen counter, on my desk, and so I'm getting the message over and over to surrender. It's not always the easiest thing to do. To move from the known to the unknown to move into the territory of the unknown. And it doesn't mean that we're going to leave behind all the wisdom that we have brought with us, all the things that we have learned in our past, all of the things that we have experienced. It doesn't mean that we're leaving those. It means that we're looking in a new direction. We're taking all that we have learned and branching off into something new. You know, moving out of our comfort zone can be frightening. It can be very frightening. It's, it's sort of like a trapeze. So imagine for a moment that you're learning how to be a trapeze person. And so you're, you've got your hands on the bar and you're swinging. You're swinging back and forth and it feels wonderful. You're in this tent, the circus tent, and you're swinging back and forth. And then you see the other trapeze bar coming towards you. And so what you have to do is you have to let go of the bar that you're holding on to and reach for the new bar. That's quite a leap. And that there is an instant in between these two where you're not holding on to anything, where you're in the air. And that is the instant that can be frightening and exhilarating. And what I know is that if you, if you don't grasp the other bar fast enough, a net will appear because the universe is always there to assist you and help you. Um, I have a quote from a man named Nikos Hajakostis. He said, every unknown that stands before us in our life demands that we completely relinquish our footing in the known. Once we do that, every unknown reveals itself in all its mighty grandeur. We have to let go of the trapeze 
to jump on the next one. It's like that, that movie that I love, uh, The Raiders of the Lost Ark, where Harrison Ford is running, he's in a cave and it's dark and foreboding and there's some bad guys chasing him, really bad guys. And he's running for his life and he's got that adventurous hat on and he's running and he's running and you're watching the scene. I remember when Andy and I saw that movie years ago, we were both on the edge of our seats running with him, running with him, running with him, and all of a sudden he, he stops suddenly and looks down and there is a chasm there. There's no more land. There's this deep chasm that he can fall into to his death. You can't even see the bottom of it. And he stops and he looks behind him and here are these bad guys ready to get him and, and kill him. And then in front of him is this chasm. There's nothing there. And something tells him to put his foot out. And as he puts his foot out, steps onto that empty space, the ground appears in front of him. And as he puts his next foot out, it appears in front of him. And each step he takes, the ground appears until he gets all the way across and then the bridge disappears so the bad guys can't get him. But it's that faith to step out when you don't see anything that's so important. It's not always that dramatic, though, is it? Sometimes it's a small step that we take. So creativity is part of the theme for this month for your church, creativity. And we can't create something new if we're not willing to let go, to step into the unknown. It, because we have a blank canvas in front of us, a beautiful big blank canvas, and, and a set of, of paints that would have all the colors in the universe and we get to create whatever we want. But we have to be willing to let go if we want the, the higher creativity, the new ideas, the, the painting that has never been painted before to come forth. We have to be able to step into the unknown because that blank canvas represents an unknown. It's it's clean, it's new, it's yours to create on. I found a quote by the Granola Book Club. Now, I don't know what this book club is, but it's kind of interesting, and I love the quote. Remember, this free-falling zone of unlimited possibilities is a, a fantastic place. The mind is granted much more freedom to create reality than it is than its typical confined spot where everything is already known. When we enter into the unknown, the creative floodgates are open. New I new brand new ideas and solutions come in. Why do we want to move into this place? Well, so we can raise our vibration and experience more aliveness. Live full out. Be open to creativity. Be open to looking at things in a new way with new eyes. Well, how do we do this? How do we accomplish this? How do we have the courage to step out of our comfort zone? Well, it doesn't have to be a huge leap like Harrison Ford off a cliff into your possible sudden death. We can take small baby steps and do things in a new way. We can envision what we want our lives to be like. Think about that for a moment. If there were no limits, if you, if you lived in the land of unlimited possibilities, what would you like your life to be like? What would, you, what would you like to give back? What would you, how would you live every day if everything was possible, everything was new? And to set our intentions. Do you have an intention to be creative, to open up to new possibilities, to, to enter this post-COVID, well, it's not really a post-COVID world yet, but to enter back into this world with new eyes, because it's not the same world that we, that we left before all of this happened. 
so I have talked to a lot of people who are having trouble with this re-entry. Uh, I, I, many more of us have become vaccinated and it becomes safer to mix with other people. We're told we can do that and we can maybe be outside without a mask. But we're, we're, we're so used to protecting ourselves, which was a good thing. We stayed safe. But many people are struggling with re-entry. How do I go back? I've heard people say, I don't even know how to talk to people anymore. I've been so isolated. Or I know it's safe, but I don't feel safe when I go outside or when I'm with someone else, even if we're all vaccinated. So there's, there's a, a, a real transition. People were struggling a little bit with, with getting back out there. I belong to a book club where there's 12 women and uh, every month we meet and before COVID, we were all meeting, the, the person whose turn it was would make dinner for all 12 people. And we decided that we would meet in person in June outside. And the woman whose turn it is said, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do that for 12 people. And she, she, she wouldn't have blinked an eye before, but we're all getting used to this again. We're all getting used to, to coming out of our isolation. And it's not always easy. Andy's um, aunt passed away a couple of days ago, his mother's only sister in Texas. And we, are, we decided that we would go back to Texas for a few days to San Antonio and um, be there for the funeral and see the family. And I realized the whole idea as I was making the plane tickets and making a reservation for a place to stay, I was getting more and more anxious. Now, I love to travel. But it seemed really, we haven't done it in so long that it seemed really scary to get out there again. Scary to do something as simple as be on an airplane or, 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 or be, find a place to stay. So it's all, it's, it's, we're all getting used to being out there again, and we can be out there in a new way, in an unlimited way, in a, in a, a brand new way of looking at things with new eyes. So 14 years ago, Andy and I took a big leap. We lived in Fremont, California, and we were serving at, at a church there in Fremont, and there must have been many small steps leading up to the decision that we made. Um, we had a restlessness, kind of an urge to do more. It wasn't anything that big, but things were shifting and we could feel it. And then we had an opportunity dropped into our lap to come to Roseburg and to candidate for a job as a minister at the Roseburg Center for Spiritual Living. And we did that. And we loved the congregation and we loved Roseburg. And after we did our talk and Andy did music and we did a workshop, they had a question and answer period. And, and there was one man who raised his hand. The first question that was asked, he said, when could you sell your house and move to Roseburg? And we were like, oh, sell our house? We had never thought of that. We didn't go, I mean, we don't want to close all those doors behind us. It was so scary. It was so frightening. And of course, if we move to Roseburg, we have to sell our house and buy a new house. But we, we moved through all those things because we had such a desire. We saw the bigger picture, a bigger idea. We ended up, once we really truly said yes, we ended up, selling our house in in Fremont and moving to and and buying a house in Roseburg in two weeks two weeks it happened so quickly because once you decide to move into that place of the unknown the universe helps you the universe conspires to make the road easier for you now I don't say we weren't terrified along the way because we were. We were in our 50s. We were moving to a new state, selling everything, leaving our family. And there were plenty of people stoking our fears. Oh, don't do that. You'll never make it there. Oh, don't do that. There were a lot of people telling us not to leave. 
but we felt that higher calling and we were able to move into that unknown and our lives have totally changed. We live in a beautiful home on the river. We have good friends here. We, we have a spiritual community. It's, it's been a wonderful thing for us to make that leap. So I invite you to take that baby step into the unknown. When, when we emerge from this, when, you're, when this wonderful church starts meeting in person again, let's look at it with new eyes, new, a new way, th things we had never thought of before. I'd like to close with this. The, the, um, the theme this month here is creativity and ascension. And um, in this magazine that I get, they have daily readings. And, and uh, in April, there was one on ascension. And I'd like to read that to you. Wherever you think you've arrived spiritually, you are now being asked to go to the next level of your understanding, to the next level of your love of self and of others. You are here at this time in history for the great awakening of the planet. You are supported in this by unknown forces for good. No matter where you are in your comprehension, there is more to know. We are all being asked at this time to be spiritual midwives to the spiritual evolution taking place on this planet. Our only job is to continue to look past appearances, not in denial of what is, but in knowing that more goodness is yet to be revealed. As we step into this unknown time, more is being revealed. The, the energies of the planet are coming forth to, to raise us up and raise our vibration, to create a new world that works for everyone. And I feel so grateful to be a part of it. We are all a part of it. So take that small step. Take that one small step and see where it leads you. Thank you.
Bonnie, again, thank you so much. Those are exactly the words that I think I needed to hear, and I'm sure a lot of us do. And Andy's music always just fits so beautifully. We now close the service today by extinguishing the chalice. And I found some words coming from Marianne Williamson that I would like to share with you. She says, change is in the air. Old patterns fall away and new energies are emerging. Consciously release what needs to be released and welcome with a full embrace the newness that you've prayed for and so richly deserve. As long as there are ways that we can serve, then we have a job to do. Thank you.